Hello and welcome to the carpet where Rod has just brought his plane over and you know it's got the electronics sticking out all over here. He, he just brought it around just to check it out and I had this uh, 6045 prop to try there. Um, but we, we saw problems straight away when um, plugged in. Aside from the fact um, his elevons were reversed so we sorted that one out. But the problem is we found that the, I think the ESC is, is binding up. We do this enough times and basically we get so the whole thing reboots. I don't think the ESC can handle the amount of um, amps it's it's pulling. I think one of the problems is that this was running 3S before and this is the Rod, what, what is this worrying man? This is the 3S that's supplying the Beck voltage uh, and this is a little uh, speedy B 20 amp which is running the motor because that's rated for 4 but this isn't rated for 4S and so I think it's having issues this is a 4S battery and we've got two ESCs and it's a bit messy so we don't really want to go out there and have the thing fail in the air so I've got it here this afternoon I'm going to put this little Emax 25 amp which is rated to 4S and has got um, a Beck which should run two servos okay so I'll stick that in now and we'll have another go okay so here's what we took out and we got the little Emacs here see in there which is uh, a little bit neater and we don't seem to have any any issues with the control links I do notice here that it's not quite in line so there is a slight binding but it seems okay prop wise loads of people said oh the props on backwards the props on backwards it's not the the issue with the prop and the noise, and it, it's spinning in the right direction, it is just the fact that it's so close to the edge, it's creating that really awkward noise there. But it's a 6045 prop, it's on the right way round, and it generates some thrust. Whether that's enough thrust, we'll see when we get to the field a bit later. But let's do that next. Well, here we are once again at the field, and there's an awful lot of wind noise, so I thought I'd do a quick voiceover of what's happening here. So um, Rod asked me to fly it because he didn't have much luck last time, which I sort of reluctantly agree because I don't like flying other people's planes, especially one that took 40 hours to print. And I'm not all that good either. But, you know, in the kingdom of the blind, the one eyed man is king and all that. So I said, yeah, sure, I'll give it a go. Just give it a good old uh, launch. And uh, Sophie, uh, my daughter here, is doing some excellent camera work on the GoPro. So here's our first go of launching it. Oh. <laughs> wow. And at first glance, it looks like exactly what happened last time. But I was slightly encouraged by this one. It, it got up, it started going, it stalled out, but it generated enough speed just to be able to at least pull it up. And I actually expected it to be intact, but nope. That nose was pretty brittle and so it all broke up again. So aside from picking all the pieces up, which of course we did, uh, because we don't want to leave them on the grass there. I mean, it's only PLA and is uh, is biodegradable and stuff, but uh, we did make sure we picked all these up. And <laughs> Rod even bought a special plastic bag whenever he tries to fly this plane. However, we thought, you know what, there was some thrust there, the control services worked, let's give it another go. So what? Rod did was pull the battery forward a bit just to get the CG right and uh, I neglected to to do that in front of camera last time there are some little nubs printed on the plane which do uh, hit the CG mark and I'd already put a little bit of weight on the front just to make sure we were just a little bit nose heavy so we went ahead and did that and we gave it another throw And we got some speed in the wing and would you Adam and Eva it's away and it's actually flying. And it actually flies okay. It's just the fact that it needs a fair amount of speed, which makes it slightly unfriendly for a sort of pure beginner, as you've got to keep it going a bit. Oh, that was pretty smooth! Went out the back. 
loop and then it went <laughs> but then we hit a problem and if you're wondering what happened there well I offered Rod to take over from the controls and he said a very firm no so I thought okay I can fly in circles and carry on or I can try and do something exciting like a loop so I put the throttle on I took it round in a loop it didn't quite end up in a loop and then the motor failed completely it just lost all power there was no thrust fortunately it had enough speed and thus enough uh, air going over the surfaces to actually glide it down reasonably safe safely it's at this point that um, Rod and I had a conversation about the motor and I realized I'd misunderstood what he meant when he was talking about uh, it was set up for free s I thought he just meant the ESC we'd already talked about me giving him a motor and him saying oh I've, I've already got one that's 2300 because I had a, a 2300 motor what he's telling me now is oh that motor was only rated for free s do you think it's smoked so uh, it seemed quite likely that we we'd blown up the motor uh, which wasn't helped by me going full throttle to try and do that loop well obviously a few extra bits came off oh yeah we've got specs okay I think the Ooh. whoa <laughs> Smoke. Where's no. the smoke come from? The motor. I think the motor's the motor. Actually. Telemetry lost. Yeah. Oh, feel of that motor? That's a safety hazard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's cooked. Yeah, literally the smoke started coming out. <laughs> and if you haven't worked it out, that motor was absolutely roasting hot. It had pretty much burnt out with the all the extra amps and power we'd managed to put through it. And here it is, complete with no nose and very burnt out motor indeed with smoke coming out of it so it seems a shame to leave it there it just started flying and we were having a bit of fun with it and then the motor blew up so there's got to be a part three there's got to be a part three um we had a misunderstanding about the motors i didn't know this was only rated for 3s i've got a bunch of 4s spares so i'm going to put a motor in here if i can actually get my hands into this bit to get the screws out to try and mount a new motor I'm not going to do anything posh with the front, like some tape, basically, or something. Some old, you know, plastic bottle top over the top there will will do, just to hold it. And I might even put some sort of all-in-one FPV gear on there because I'm very keen that uh, Rod at least fly this for some period of time. So if I can get it in the air and hand him the radio and he's got goggles on, at least we can do that. So yeah, join us for part three, which will come up at some point, and we will get this flying again and hopefully FPV it. We just need to give it another decent throw and we'll be up there. But I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.